It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. Hey everyone, it's Aaron from Got A Minute. What we have here is a 6,000 year timeline. We're looking for a potential rapture of 2024. Oh man, this stuff is complicated. It's very challenging. So all the numbers presented, of course, are a combination of a little bit of speculation, a little bit of study. Um, but ultimately, uh, the beginning foundational thought on this is just simply on faith. Before talking about these numbers, I believe that Jesus truly did come 4,000 years after the sin event of Adam. I just, 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 it's more of a faith thing than it is a proof thing. So there's a combination of faith and facts in, in this chart that I'm presenting. And so we're going to talk about all the facts here, but the foundational thought is uh, in the first seven words of the Bible, we have in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And uh, this is my Hebrew interlinear English ESV Old Testament. And uh, there's seven words in the f first verse of the Bible. And then the Aleph Tav is the fourth word, and, the, and then the Aleph Tav is in the sixth word. And so I believe by faith that God uh, came down in flesh, Jesus, and he died for our sins. And that 2,000 years later, by faith, by seeing what the word says here, that he's going to come back. It's just a faith thing. And we can show now through facts that that looks to be the case. So um, here we go. I'm going to try my best. And I'm not going to go into depth with anything, but it's going to be a bit of an overview. And we'll, we'll try and explain why I think the rapture could happen uh, anytime soon. So where do we start? I believe that the world is about 6,000 years old. And there's a guy named James Usher. He's Irish. He's a priest. And uh, he lived in the 1600s. And he came to the conclusion that the world was created in 4004 B.C., well, I'm not quite sure about that, but that fits really, really, really nice. So uh, if you want, you can do a lot of study on James Usher. I listened to a bunch of videos on him and some review, but basically he was a smart historian that knew a lot of stuff that uh, went through all the genealogies and he decided that 4004 made the most sense. Well, if 4004 is the beginning date, that's uh, 4,000 years to the potential birth of Christ. So that's perfect. And if Adam lived 33 and a half years old, then the sin of event would have happened when he was 33 and a half, and then Jesus died on the cross 33 and a half years after being born. Isn't that a perfect combination? You know, there's verses about um, by all, um, we, we've all, we've all fall short because of the first Adam, but by the second Adam, which is Christ, uh, he saves us. So from sin to salvation, I believe by faith, it's a 4,000 year gap um, and it makes complete sense. And we'll talk about some other stuff too. And then from salvation to one nation, if you go to Ezekiel 37, verse 22, let me show you that one. And uh, right here, it says here specifically in 37, verse 22, uh, and I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. So he's talking about uh, no more two tribes, no more, no more, uh, you know, Jew, Jew and Gentile, but one nation. And so, I believe by faith that from the sin event to the cross was four thousand years, and also from salvation to one nation under Jesus Christ will be two thousand years. So from sin to salvation to one nation, we've got a six thousand year plan, and then we've got the millennial kingdom, which is one thousand years after that second coming. And now I don't know if this is actually going to be the timeline, folks. Like I said, I'm always speculating, but this fits real nice. Okay, so in 1541, there was a guy that sealed up the Golden Gate. Uh, now, there's different dates on that, but that's the last date that I was able to find online. And if you had 490 years from that date, that is 2031. 490 is 70 times seven and um uh, that could be a bit of a i don't know how to say it um kind of they can reuse daniel 9 the enemy can do it so they can point to the messiah if he shows up anytime soon their messiah the false messiah right so if the antichrist was to show up now they can say look 483 years from 1541 
it's kind of a perfect fit. I believe it's uh, Ezekiel 40 uh, when it's talking about the temple being closed. I mean, the door being closed and sealed. Um, but anyway, this, the enemy can use this date and they can use it right now, this year. It would be fit so perfect. Keep in mind that uh, Islam and uh, their belief is their Mahadi will, the Mahadi will rule for seven years and he wants to convert the whole world to Islam. And if you don't become uh, Muslim, then you'll be beheaded eventually and the whole world will be Islam. That's their belief. So isn't that fitting how it's, it's opposite of ours? So there's that. There's one thing. From 70 AD to 2031, what you can do here is <laughs> there's inclusive counting and there's exclusive counting. So some of these numbers, um, if you you can start counting from 70 or you can start counting from 71. Like if you were to count 70, you know, 70 and then 71 and then 72, well, 70 and then 71 and then 72, that's three. But if you don't start with the 70, you can go with 71, 72, and that's two years. So it makes a difference. So sometimes... I don't know how to handle the inclusive and exclusive counting, but in this case, if we start with 71 being one, well, there you go, it, it's, it fits. So remember that, um, that prophecy that we talked about last year, pointed to 2030? If you don't count 70 as one, but you count 71 as one, well then it, that whole thing still fits. It's, this is, I'm talking about inclusive versus exclusive counting. So 40 times seven times seven is 1960, and there you go. Uh, why 40? Because it says that in Ezekiel chapter 4. Is Ezekiel lying on his side. And that's uh, number uh, Ezekiel 4 verse 6. And there's your 40 days there. And in, in, uh, he lies on his side for 40 days. And the other time is 390. Okay. So um, so that still fits from the temple destruction if we, if we count from 71. But we can't use this, this concept next year. And the other one, we were using it from 701 BC. But again, if we start the count from 700 because of the inclusive versus exclusive counting, you can still use that prophecy in Ezekiel 4 verse 5. But this is the last year that you can do that as well. So this is the last year you can do that for the 70 AD. And it's the last year you can do it for the, the prophecy from the siege in Jerusalem, uh, which is 701 BC, uh, according to Wikipedia. But if we start the count from 700 BC, it's the last chance for that. So last chance for that. Last chance for that. All right. Um, we have here the cross dates. So what we have here is the decree from Ezra. And we talked about that in my last video, how this is 49 years here to 408 BC when Darius II was reigning in Nehemiah. You can find that verse from Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 22. And I have here, we have, uh, it's, I found a, um, something that says that in the uh, 15th year of this guy, they completed the return and the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And the 15th year of that guy is 408 Darius II. And that verse, again, is Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 22. But then um, I've got this other article um, that was sent to me that to confirm that that was written in some sort of a side book. But if that's true, if, if the restoration, the return... And the rebuilding of Jerusalem, because that verse in Daniel 9, it's not necessarily restore and build, but it's actually to return and build. And that was that seems to be completed by 408 BC. So the, the decree given to Ezra in 457, uh, doing this whole inclusive-exclusive counting, and the same thing with that date, this is the last time we can use this prophecy, this particular year. And then the way that, that gets us to a 31 AD crucifixion, because... The 69 weeks gives us account to when Jesus Christ was anointed, and that was likely in 27 AD, when he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And uh, you can read Acts 10, I think it's the verse 38, when it confirms that he was anointing with the Holy Spirit. In Luke 4, it talks about uh, Jesus being anointed. And in Luke 3, it talks about that as well. So basically, Luke 3 and 4, those are great reference chapters to point to how he was anointed. And Messiah means the anointed one. So this is a prophecy leading up to when Jesus was meant to be anointed at the beginning of his ministry. And so, 457 to 27 AD is a perfect, uh, no joking around, 69 weeks, but seven weeks 
gets you to when they r- returned and built Jerusalem. That, again, that word restore in the Bible in Daniel 9.25 should really probably be return and build because that word is shub. And most of the time in the Old Testament, it's it, it's used with the word return. And that's what the, it was. It was a, re- a return and a rebuild of the walls and, and the temple and, and uh, the community back. And so that happened there. And then 62 weeks later, you get the 27 AD when he's anointed. The only thing we'll be able to use next year is the whole prophetic year count and squishing the years so that it leads up to his triumphal entry. But I like this one way better. So this is the last uh, time that we can use this 457 decree as something pointing to the time of the Messiah. This is the last time we can use the Ezekiel 4 prophecy. This is the last time we can use Ezekiel 4 prophecy over here as well. So that all fits, that that all fits still, but this is kind of like the last year for things fitting really nice. Uh, so I said the 700. Okay, okay. This is also kind of the last year <laughs> for fitting in the King David year. So King David died in and around 971 BC or even 970 BC. And again, it depends on how you count, if you include that first year or not. Uh, but essentially 970 BC is 3,000 years from 2031, and it's 3,000 years from the sin event. And um, that is such an interesting connection, how King David died 3,000 years from the sin event, and it looks like uh, he, he would have died 3,000 years from the second coming of Christ. A lot of the stuff in the Old Testament, when it says the, you know, King David will rule, it's actually... King David, the the seed, Jesus, the seed of King David, will rule. David was given a um, a promise, a covenant, the Davidic covenant, and he was promised that a seed would come from his line, and that's Jesus Christ, the son of David. And in Matthew one one, it says Jesus Christ, the son of David. So we have a genealogy from David, and isn't it perfect that he died, and his son, which means peace, was. Uh, took over and started building the temple and reign. And so there's your perfect halfway point. We can't really do much more with this anymore too. So that's running out of uh, runway space for that to make sense. King David dying right in the middle of the 6,000 year plan. Um, 3,000 to the left to the sin event and 3,000 to the second coming. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 1400 BC. Why? Okay, this is a big one too. That's, That's so. What we have here is uh, a lot of people will will agree within a three-year window of when they left Exodus. They left Exodus, most people would agree, between 448 to 446, somewhere in that window. So 44, so 1448 or 1447 or 1446 BC, one of the two. And then that means they would have crossed the Jordan either in 1408 or 1407 or 1406. Okay, so the thing is, they didn't actually get their land, they didn't divide their land up until right around 1400 BC. So why am I saying that? And this is such such a critical thing to know, and this will help with the whole calendar thing. Um, Okay, so uh, Joshua, Joshua in chapter 14, I did a video with on this with Dr. Barry about a year ago, and uh, Here's uh, Joshua 14. Like, if you want to watch that video, you can. It's a, I think it's like nine months ago, and we are talking about last year, but you can apply the same concept to this year. So Caleb, it says, I was 40. Okay, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, went sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. So he was 40. Skip down. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old. Okay. I was 40 at Kadesh Barnea. Okay, Kadesh Barnea, it says 38. And the time we took to come uh, from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the valley of Zered was 38 years. Okay. So, I was 40 at that place, and then there was 38 more years. So 40 plus 38 is 78. All right. So he he was, there was 78 years gap there. So 85 minus 78 years would have been the gap in space 
between when they crossed over the Jordan and then when, when Caleb inherits Hebron. Okay? So there's a seven-year gap between when they crossed the Jordan and when Caleb inherits Hebron. And they essentially walk into their, their, uh, their promised land and the cities of Judah and everything. So if you go back to this chart now, we have 1,400. That's pretty much seven years after they crossed the Jordan. And like I said, history is either uh, 1408 or 1407 or 1406. Depends on how you count it. But if you go with the 1400, seven years after they crossed the Jordan, when they got into their promised land, that is, um, seven times seven is 490. So again, you know how that we had got that 490 here? And you know how Daniel chapter 9 is talked about 490 weeks, 70? We got another cycle. We have another perfect cycle of 490 here. And 7 times 490 is 3,430 years. So from when they entered the promised land, after the seven years of war, they inherited their land. They went to the promised land. But there was seven years of war before that. Seven years of war. And how many times did they walk around Jericho? Seven times. The sevens are everywhere. But who escaped before the seven years of war and before all this destruction? It was Rahab. Rahab, the Gentile, escaped because of her faith. She's like, your, your, your God is going to destroy me. And she escapes. We are the Rahab in the story of this whole promise, uh, this promise to us. And so, again, if they cross the Jordan in like 1407, the Gentile escapes, then the, the seven times around Jericho, then the seven years of war. Remember I said it was there was 78, uh, between the age of 85 and 78 is seven years. And then they inherit the land. Well, if you apply this same math from the time of Rahab, which maybe was around 1407, give or take, Use the same same math that gets you to 2024 over here uh, for the rapture of the church, the Rahab rapture, the Rahab rapture. Ain't that cool? That's uh, perfect. Okay, but uh, we're gonna keep it light here. We're not gonna go too nuts here. But um, also, if you this is just fun math too. If you go with seven times seven times seventy seven, that equals three seven seven three. Those are, uh, a 37 is a 12th prime number and a 73 is another prime number. If you multiply those numbers together, that gets you 2701. Remember that first verse I showed you at the beginning? The first verse of the Bible in Hebrew, the value of this verse right here is 2701. Whoa, whoa, I love that stuff. Now, if you were to subtract that number um, from 2031, that gets you over here. Now, I don't know if there's any significant date. So if you guys can help me out, if there's any significant date here, 1743 BC or in and around that ballpark, I'd love to know. I'm pretty sure they were in slavery at this time. That makes the most sense, Israel. But um, this one, I didn't do much studying on. I just wanted to show you just the cool math that how something could be super neat there. And uh, it equals the first verse in the Bible. Okay. Um, and then we've got the sin event. Okay. So as a recap to just to recap everything we got here. And this is just a brief overview. Of course, we can sit, sit on these topics a lot longer. But what we have here is we have seven years between Rahab and the promised land. Uh, how many days is a woman supposed to purify herself or not purify herself? Let me, let me just go find it. Speak to the children of Israel saying, if a woman has conceived and bore a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days as in the days of her customary impurity, she shall be unclean. So there's seven days there. How many days are the priests supposed to be consecrated inside the tabernacle? Seven days. Leviticus 8, 33 through 36. The sevens are everywhere. And so we have a Rahab rapture seven years before they get the promised land. And then Israel's at war. So seven years before the promised land could be over there. We have... Uh, the combination of one nation in Ezekiel 37, verse 22. We can't push this prophecy over here in 70D any further. We can't push this prophecy uh, going from uh, the 701 BC any longer than here. 
we we're running out of wiggle room for that one to make sense from the promised land. Maybe we could push that one another year, maybe, but ew, it's not looking so great. Um, we can't push the prophecy from Ezra. We can't push this 408 back. We we don't, if we use the prophetic count, we don't have a seven week to, leading to anything. It gives us a nothing burger to, to point to a 32 or a 33 AD crucifixion. I don't think we can change the size of the ministry from Jesus from three and a half to anything less or anything more. Because I think Jesus, he, uh, I don't think I know, he filled, fulfilled the law, he did everything, and Elijah had a three and a half year ministry, and the two witnesses are going to have a 1260 day ministry, which is three and a half years. So why would Jesus have anything less? So I don't think that could be changed much. Uh, I don't think we can change the structure of the tribulation. I think that it's seven years and nothing less than that. Um, it's sevens. Sevens are like written five million times in the Bible. Like it's everywhere. There's a seven everywhere. Like it's hidden in everything. Even the, the Hebrew letters, things are systematically spaced with sevens everywhere. You know, it's like, it's almost like when you look at a uh, a lawn and there's like five billion pieces of grass and you say, prove to me where a piece of grass is. Like, look at the whole piece of grass. Like, look at all the sevens. It's like, yeah, it's everywhere, you know? So I don't think we can adjust the uh, the length of the tribulation to it, to make sense of anything. I don't think Jesus fulfilled the last three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. That doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't know where else to adjust um, from this point. I guess we'll, when we're here, if we're here next year, we'll figure it out as we are right now. Um, but this is still looking really clean. So I hope you understand it. If you don't get it, um, just watch the video again and just zero in on certain things. And I'm certainly open to correction and redirection. Um, but uh, this is where we're at right now. So I pray that uh, Jesus comes very, very soon for the church. Until then, the most important thing, <laughs> more importantly than understanding all this stuff, is understanding that Jesus died for your sins and he is your sacrifice. And you cannot enter the presence of the Lord without the perfect blood of Christ covering you. If you don't walk into the gate or the door without the blood of Christ on, you will be found guilty. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short from the glory of God. But thank you, Jesus, for fulfilling everything to a T and being our perfect lamb. So uh, accept that free gift of salvation. And Romans 10, 9 through 13 is an awesome place to start. And my, my salvation verses are in my description box below. And if you want to join the community and study with us, join the Discord where we chat and voice chat and text and all that kind of stuff. All right. One day closer. See you in the clouds. Adios, muchachos. Bye.